Good morning, this is Annette with Oasis Solutions Group and this morning we're going to take a quick view of Sage 100. So you'll notice on my opening screen I have a dashboard that has accounts payable, top vendors, if I scroll down a little bit I have balance sheet details, budget comparisons, and then income statement details. This dashboard is uh, set up by user, so there are many options that you can add to the dashboard uh, for your particular user uh, interface. So it, from the dashboard, I can also drill down into various reports and various functions here. So for example, on the vendor, uh, vendor screen, I can drill down into any of these vendors and see more detail about the vendor just from the dashboard view. I'll come back to this vendor inquiry in just a moment. Um, so a couple of other uh, items I'd like to show you as far as user interface are some shortcut uh, options that we have in Sage 100. Over on the left, there's a My Task, and you can set up folders and then drag and drop your tasks into the folders. We have some customers that set up uh, pro uh, period end or maybe year end folders and then drag and drop the things that they want to do into those folders, for example, reports and uh, journal entry, um, data entry, and that type of thing. You can also set up shortcuts here at the top. I have a gray toolbar that I can do a right click and add any type of shortcut there that I want. And again, that is user specific, so your users would have that, uh, that um, shortcuts when they log in. A few other things that are here on the top before I get into the actual data entry screens are um, I can look at modules here so I can pull down a list of modules uh, depending on what modules you've purchased uh, is what would be on this list and from here I can go to accounts payable for example then over to main and then it pulls down so that's another way that you can access the information um, you can also change some of your views here on the on the screens and then there's a help button you'll see this on various um, uh, screens as well but the help is basically the the manuals inside the system and, and they're actually um, helpful um, that, so the help is very helpful um, so I want to go into uh, the general ledger a little bit so account maintenance for example is uh, where I could set up my chart of accounts so the account structure for Sage 100 is you can have up to 35 characters and it's alphanumeric and it can be divided into 10 different segments. So this uh, demo company I have has five leading uh, characters with multiple segments behind, behind it. So if we dissect that a little bit, if I look at accounts receivable account, for example, you see my account number and then the 01 pertains to Irvine, so I can see here it pertains to Irvine. And then uh, if I look my, at my next account, this one is Irvine and then 001 is Peach Avenue on Irvine. So, and, and this one is 02, which is Atlanta, and then the 01 here is Peach Avenue on Atlanta. So in Sage 100, the account structure is embedded within the chart of accounts, uh, not dimensionally, it is embedded in the chart of accounts. Um, and then from account maintenance, I can drill down into more information as far as history, variances, and, and transactions as well. And I can compare my budgets to my actuals here, and also on, on different reports too. And you'll notice on a lot of the screens, and I'll point this out as we go along, there's a button here at the top for memos. So I can attach, I can do a memo about this account, or I can do attachments to the account as well. I can do that during data entry um, too. It's, uh, so let's say I have a general journal entry and I'm going to post my year-end transactions from the um, accountant. I can attach that to that journal entry and it stays with it throughout the uh, life of the system. So, and also the, the uh, Sage 100 system keeps as much data as you want. So you can purge that if you want or you can keep it um, as long as you want. 
Uh, we have some customers that have been uh, cust our Sage customers for 20-something years, and a lot of them have not purged information out of their systems, and it doesn't slow it down, doesn't bog it down in any way. Um, so I've gone into general journal entry, and you'll see it defaults to the posting date I've set up as, as June 30th. You can have a reversing date as well. And then your journal comments can be up to 9,999 characters. So you'll see on the right-hand side, uh, there's slide bars there. So if I uh, wrote basically uh, half of a novel on here, it would, uh, would uh, have that information. Then if I uh, click on the Lines tab is where I can start my journal entry. And on here is a grid design, so I can make this look how I want. So, for example, if I had a bunch of, if I had a journal entry that had a whole bunch of debits, and then I had one credit, I could, for data entry sake, I could move that credit down here. I can move the comment down here, and I can do account number, account number, account number, debit, 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 and then bring my credit account up here and post the credit to it. So there's some flexibility on. Um, on being able to customize the data entry screen. So it's just a, a standard journal entry. Um, also, you can have journal entries that are uh, saved journal entries as well as recurring journal entries. Um, so there's lots of uh, different options on there. On a saved journal entry, it has the account numbers and then you would fill in the dollar amount. So we see some people using that for payroll, for example, if they do payroll outside the system, that the account numbers are, are the same, but the amounts might be the same every time. They'll use that uh, function for that as well. And then you'll notice again my little memo button up here so I can do attachments to this as I go along. So that's just a little view of the uh, general journal screen. Also in General Ledger, I can have budgets, and I can key in these budgets, but I can also import the budget. So if I've done my budgets in Excel or in another budgeting program, I can uh, import that into the budgets and then do budget comparisons. So in Sage 100, I have eight different budgets that I can look at. You'll see two of them here. But I can also add a next year budget, or maybe I have a mid-year revised budget, or you know, just anything that I want. I can add eight. Uh, I can add six more columns to this for budget comparisons, as well. And um, as far as reports on the general ledger, I'm going to go back to the main uh, taskbar, and here are a list of the standard reports that are there. One of the features that I really like on here is that you can have reports that are specific to what you want. So if I had a report that I wanted to do at the month end, for example, uh, that were just uh, certain account numbers, I can go over to the right and I can do a Save As, and I'll just save it as my name. And then I can go down here and say um, I want to analyze my sales accounts um, each month. So I would just put in the range of um, my sales accounts and then do a save. So each month when I come in I would just use my uh, default setting here and it would already have populated the account numbers or if I wanted to do locations or any of that information I could do it here and it uh, populates it with that. So this is a general ledger detail report. And I can preview it, I can print it, I can export this report out, I can email the report. So it has a lot of different functionality uh, with that. All the reports are done in Crystal Reports, which means that uh, you can modify any of the reports any way that you want. So there's different things that you could do with these reports. So that's just a quick view of the uh, General Ledger Detail Report for my sales. Let me see, actually, if I can get another um, period on here, there it is, that has some actual detail on it so you can see it. Uh, so it has the beginning balance, has my, um, my various um, entries for the month, and the ending balance for each account. So like I said, if you wanted to 
maybe uh, make these account numbers bold so that you can see them better. You could do that because it's all done in Crystal Reports. So that's one of the features that, that I really like in the reports. It's easy to uh, customize the reports and generate them. There are also um, standard financial statement reports that come with the system. Then you can also have a, uh, an extended report writer for the financial statements as well, which gives you a lot more flexibility. But within the system, there's some standard financial statements, balance sheet, cash flows that you can create as well. So I'll go back to my tasks. Uh, if I go to Accounts Payable, the Vendor Maintenance is where I would set up my vendors. And there's a couple different things on here that, uh, that are nice. Uh, so I've set up that this vendor gets electronic payments, so they get ACH. So over on the right-hand side is where I would set up the electronic payment their bank account routing number and, and all that information. Then on the paperless, I would set up their email address or addresses. You could send it to multiple people as well. So when you print checks, then the um, uh, vendors that get checks, they print the checks and then it creates that ACH file automatically that you can send to the bank and then it automatically sends out the stub uh, to the vendor with what you're paying. Um, so that's a nice feature as well. Then there's different options. You can look at information about the vendor. And then I have the invoices tab where it shows uh, invoices that are uh, still open. It would also show invoices that were paid. So I can double click on any of these and it will drill me down into what was actually on that invoice. This one came from a purchase order so you would see a line items on there but if it were just an accounts payable invoice you would see the general ledger um, account numbers on there as well. And then again I have the memo function up at the top where I can do memos uh, about that vendor or I can do attachments, contracts, things like that uh, with that vendor. And then invoice data entry is just uh, the basic uh, invoice data entry. And um, I would pick the vendor and then uh, put in the invoice number and the dollar amount. Um, and their terms come up. Of course, I can change the terms. I can hold the payment or I can do separate checks. So if I had a bunch of invoices for this vendor and I wanted this this invoice to be on a separate check, I can do that as well. And I can put a comment here um, too. So I'll do that. And then my lines tab is where I would uh, put in my GL account number. So it defaulted to this one GL account number. Um, but I can put in, I can spread this as many ways as I want to. As you see, the screen is is pretty long here, so I can spread that as many ways as I want to on the GL. Uh, there's no limit to that. And then you'll also notice this is in that grid view, and I have my description of that account down here, but I can push it up here, or I can push it back down. just depends on uh, data entry and who, how they want the data entry to look. Again, you have that uh, memo here, so I can scan and attach the actual invoice to this invoice, and it flows through uh, to the history and, and all that. And you'll be able to see that information um, from that point forward on that, on that vendor. Um, also, manual check entry is where I can put in any uh, quick print checks that I have or maybe wire transfers. Uh, voiding a check is all done there. And then invoice payment selection is where uh, the, you would select the invoices that you want to pay um, for that check run. And um, so they appear here in the screen and I can click on the ones that I want or if I have multiple I can hold my control key down and click the ones that I want to pay. It shows me down at the bottom what my dollar amount is that I'm going to pay. Once I'm finished I just do OK. And I can print a uh, pre-check register if I wanted to or go down to check printing and electronic payment. So this is where I would print the checks and it also creates the ACH file uh, for those ACH vendors and sends it out. Um, the checks are again in uh, crystal so they can be modified and fit to uh, current check forms. 
The other feature that Sage 100 has is for MICR checks. So you can have blank check stock and uh, by bank code and by company you can print the information on the, the actual check with your logo and it looks like a printed check. It works well with the bank and um, saves you that printing cost especially if you're printing checks from, from multiple companies. So that's a nice feature as well. Also the system has a bank reconciliation module and that module everything flows into it and uh, you can also uh, do uh, transfers from your bank so you could bring in a file from your bank to uh, clear those checks automatically. The other feature that the bank rec module has is a positive pay so we see a lot more of our customers using that um, with the bank. So what it does is every time you write a check it sends a file with those check numbers to the bank. So let's say I wrote check number 1 to 20 and somebody uh, tried to cash check number 22 the bank would verify that that is not the uh, correct check in the sequence that I sent them and it would not cash that check. So in the advent of a lot of uh, fraud um, a lot of people are going to that posit positive pay and we've actually had some customers who the bank has, has called them and said somebody's trying to cash a check that's outside of, of what you gave me. So it saved, uh, saved some money and some, some headache and heartache for some people as well. Uh, so that's just a brief tour. I just wanted to show you the uh, screens of Sage 100 and what it does and uh, how, how uh, user-friendly it actually is and getting around in the system. Thank you.